Hey, good morning, Faith family, and welcome to The Daily Connection. It's Friday, and I know most of us are thinking, oh, thank goodness the work week is over. But I just want to encourage you to live with an anticipation for what's right around the corner. And I'm talking about Sunday, a time when we gather together as a faith family and we celebrate Jesus, singing praises to his name, studying his word. We get into our connect group and we connect with life-changing truth, life-changing community, life-changing ministry, all of that lived in anticipation and preparation for that. And speaking of preparation, today our verse is verse 9 of 1 John chapter 1. We're kind of bringing this to a conclusion, but what a concluding verse it is. Where John tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now obviously we had to put that verse back into its context in order to understand the full implication Yesterday, Brother Aaron talked about verse 8, which says, If we say we have no sin, then we're deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So John is saying, hey, look, just because we're believers doesn't mean there's some sort of a spiritual force field around us that prevents us from being tempted, that prevents us from falling into that temptation and giving in to the desires of the flesh. I mean, even Paul talks about how in Romans uh, chapter 7, that his, his new nature in Christ and his old nature in the flesh, they're, they're, they're battle, they're warring against one another. And there are times when he, he will do things that he doesn't want to do, or he won't do the things that he should do. In that case, you know, bringing about the reality of sin in his life. And he says he calls himself a wretched man. Well, John's talking about the same thing, that, hey, even though we're born again in Christ, even though we have the new nature, the old nature is still present and still trying through the temptations of our adversary, through the attacks of our adversary, trying to pull us back into a, a lifestyle. Of course, for us, it'd be to ruin our witness, to negate our witness. And so... John says, we, we sin. We're going to sin. So here's the result of that. Here's how we, you know, we deal with that. We confess our sins. If we confess our sins. Another one of those if statements that start in verse 6. So what does he mean by confess? Well, that's a fascinating word because it means to say the same thing. It means to agree with. It means that, first of all, we have to agree with God's righteous standard and acknowledge that, hey, I missed it. God, I agree with your judgments and your word that what I've done here does not represent you. What, what I've thought about, you know, the attitude that I've harbored in my heart does not represent your character, your nature. So John says, first of all, we've got to agree with God. We've got to say the same thing about the whole idea of sin, about the whole reality of sin. So, But if we'll do that, he says, God is faithful and righteous. Faithful means God is consistent in who he is. That he's made promises in his word that when his people come and we're truly broken, we're truly repentant for our sins that we commit, God said, hey, God has declared, I will forgive in that sense. I, I will honor your sorrow. I will honor your, your uh, appeal for forgiveness. I'll honor that. And only he can. It says righteous there. You know, God's faithful, God's righteous. Again, if we, we're looking to his character, it means he acts in a way that is right. He acts in a way that is just. And so he's going to do what is right to, you know, in, in that moment in, in response to our attitude, which is to forgive. He forgives. And that's a great one because it means to send away, to cast off. So, you know, it, it's, it's almost as if God says, hey, I'm forgiving this and I'm going to leave no record of it. So, um, you know, the writer of Psalms says, you know, he takes our sin and places them as far as the east is from the west and remembers them no more. God knows all things. So for God to declare, I'm going to have amnesia on this. I'm going to forget this. I'm not going to have a tally and a record that's going to keep bogging you down. Satan's the one who holds it over our head. God says, hey, I forgive. I send it away. I cast it off. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's not just that he wants to say, hey, there's no mark on your record. He says, I'm going to purge the record. I'm, I'm going to absolutely wash it clean. You're not even going to be able to see the old uh, ink marks. The, you're not even going to be able to see the, the old uh, lead marks. You know, sometimes when we use a, a lead pencil, there's still a little bit of residual there that if you look closely, you can see. He said, hey, I'm going to do away with that as well. It says, all our unrighteousness. It's a final declaration and a final uh, clearing away of and, and cleansing, if you will. That's a wonderful absolutely glorious truth to know that as a child of God we have the promise of God that he will not only forgive but he will cleanse us of any residual effects that may be present there friends that's absolutely crucial to living the good the God sent life the Christ honoring life is crucial to coming to worship ready to truly celebrate Jesus that we got to know our sins have been forgiven and they have been cleansed from us. And we're ready at that point to do what God called and commissioned us to do. And you know what I'm going to say here. 
Live sent.